Everyone could see that home prices were spiraling out of control, and now we are seeing some solid numbers that are just shocking. Home prices are rising at the fastest pace ever recorded, and millions of potential home buyers are getting increasingly frustrated with how competitive the housing market has become. All across the country, average hard-working American families are being completely priced out of the market. Prior to the health crisis, the biggest price bubbles used to be in big cities and major urban centers along both coasts. But right now, buyers have been looking for the safety and comfort of rural and suburban areas whose markets all over the nation are red hot. Bidding wars are happening so frequently that offering more than $1 million over the asking price has become a common thing. Buyers are so desperate to purchase a home that in addition to cash bags, they've been offering trips, automobiles, even to buy another home for the seller. This crazy frenzy is sending home prices to dizzying heights, and the latest numbers can prove so. On Tuesday, headlines all across America were reporting the latest reading of the S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller home price data, which revealed that in the month of April, U.S. home prices jumped the most in over 30 years. According to the Case-Shiller Index nationwide, property values surged 14.6% from a year earlier, and that's the highest level since 1988. That came after a 13.2% increase in March, marked the 11th consecutive month of accelerated price gains. Now, the United States has never seen a rise of this magnitude in all that time. In fact, in at least 20 U.S. cities, home prices spiked 14.9% beating the median estimate in a survey of Bloomberg economists and signaling an even bigger gain than what was seen during the previous housing bubble. One expert that was largely quoted by several sources said the rise in prices was nothing short of extraordinary. April's performance was truly extraordinary. The 14.6% gain in the national composite is literally the highest reading in more than 30 years of S&P CoreLogic case Shiller data, stated Craig Lazara, Managing Director and Global Head of Index Investment Strategy at S&P Dow Jones Indices. Other financial experts with zero hedge affirm these sharp price increases make sense thanks to trillions in stimmy checks near record low mortgage rates and an exodus away from cities. Redfin has also released its own numbers, which have shown an even faster pace of home price appreciation. In the report, Redfin analysts say median home sale prices jumped to an all-time high of 18% last month, with 58% of all house sales closing within two weeks of listing. That's a new record. And 45% of them are being sold for more than their listing price, also a record. But don't mind these numbers. Federal Reserve officials insist inflation is not a problem, and they have everything under control. Meanwhile, experienced economists are telling us that this euphoric market is only expanding the growing divide between the haves and the have-nots in housing, with sales activity dramatically rising on the higher end of the market, but falling on the low end as increasingly more buyers are getting priced out. They note that the Federal Reserve is responsible for keeping mortgage rates artificially low through its bond buying program, and those suppressed rates helped to fuel the home buying boom over the past year. Even though they have ticked slightly higher in recent days, that wasn't enough to offset the huge price gains. So much for the Fed's all-inclusive monetary policy where lower-income people now can't afford housing. Wrote Peter Buchwald, Chief Investment Officer at Bleakley Advisory Group. Those who are being left out of the market have no other alternative rather than renting a place. 
However, rent prices have also been on a relentless rise in many areas around the country. Leading the trend is Boise, Idaho, where rents rose another 6% in June and skyrocketed by 39% over the last 12 months. The fastest single-month rent growth was recorded in Spokane, Washington, where prices soared by 8.1% in June and went up 31% above pre-outbreak levels. Moreover, many fast-growing cities have experienced a 20% price increase over the last year and a half. Most of them are located in the western United States, and they have been absorbing the exceeding rental demand from nearby pricey metro areas like the San Francisco Bay Area and Greater Los Angeles. The latest price increases are coming at a time that U.S. renters collectively owe more than $30 billion in back rent. Some states, such as California, are trying to pay off unpaid rent accrued during the recession before mass evictions begin. At least 10 million workers who live paycheck to paycheck remain on the verge of losing their homes as soon as the CDC moratorium expires next month. All across the economy, the cost of everything keeps soaring. New vehicle prices, for example, are being sold well above the sticker price. As the Wall Street Journal explained, automakers typically set what is known as the Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price, or MSRP, a figure that appears on the window sticker of a new model. But with inventory tied and customers clamoring for cars and trucks, Auto dealers are simply charging more, increasing the price above sticker, and in some cases requiring customers buy certain add-ons, such as protective coatings and accessories as part of the increase. Several buyers already reported dealerships asking for thousands of dollars above MSRP. Analysts and dealers affirm the practice is becoming more common and widespread, occurring on a wider range of vehicles and even in more mainstream models that wouldn't normally be targeted for such price hikes. In normal times, consumers used to negotiate a deal that was far below the sticker price as possible. But now, as the new vehicle shortage has intensified over recent months, many customers are willing to make offers that are a whole lot higher than the MSRP. I was shocked, exclaimed Ken Baird, a 61-year-old from Boca Raton, Florida, who was recently shopping for a Kia Telluride. The sticker on that particular vehicle was around $45,000. Mr. Baird said he offered to pay $3,000 over that price since the vehicle was in high demand. However, the dealership wanted $10,000 above the original sticker price. They said, I'll get the $55,000 from somebody else, Mr. Baird disclosed. These days, companies are taking advantage of heated demand for products and dwindling supplies so they can stretch prices as much as they can. That goes from homes and vehicles to everyday items and food. At this point, Every time Americans take a trip to the grocery store, they end up paying more for the same products. But higher food prices aren't just affecting financially strapped families and the working poor. The truth is food price inflation is getting very painful for food banks just as well, which is making their mission of helping those in need much more expensive. Recently, one official at one food bank in Chicago exposed that their food purchasing budget is now significantly higher in order to meet the growing demand. We're already spending a lot more on food than we have in years past, revealed Greg Trotter, a spokesman for the Greater Chicago Food Depository, a large food bank who spoke with VOA News. Our food purchasing budget has doubled this year, he said, and the worst is yet to come for food banks across the nation, as in coming weeks, a huge surge in demand for food is expected to happen as stimulus checks expire for millions of Americans. In roughly 25 states, all government unemployment aid related to the health crisis 
is about to end. And that might be the perfect storm of factors that will stress food banks even further. The high prices are costing us more to feed a family in need, outlined Alison Paget, Development and Outreach Director at Food for Others. We'll have to rethink our purchasing decisions because economists say the prices are going to be high for at least a year. In essence, all of these government measures that were supposed to help the population resulted in the deterioration of people's purchasing power and ravaging inflation all over the economy. Now, this whole situation could have been avoided if it wasn't for our leader's wild spending binge that the Fed not only financed, but also took the cue to artificially pump financial markets by injecting trillions of freshly printed dollars to allegedly avert a collapse after the collapse had already happened. Now, price bubbles are emerging pretty much everywhere you look with no end in sight for this upward trend. And if rampant inflation wasn't bad enough, U.S. consumers are also dealing with extensive shortages. For example, now that the holiday weekend's just around the corner, several gas stations around the nation are already reporting widespread gasoline shortages. In the meantime, the 43 million Americans that are getting ready to hit the road for the July 4th holiday should brace for some of the highest gas prices in almost seven years which are averaging $3.10 a gallon. And that is a 42% increase compared to just a year ago. The current shortages are being mainly caused by a lack of available truckers to deliver fuel. And according to CNN, this means that thousands of stations will not get any gas delivered at all. If we see the same we've seen after the Colonial Pipeline was shut down just for a week, this implies that we're headed to another wave of panic buying and chaos across the country's gas stations. Although the mainstream media keeps trying to sugarcoat the devastating effects of high inflation, saying that these widespread shortages are a sign of a booming economy, the reality is much more bitter than many realize. We're effectively living a rerun of the Jimmy Carter era of the 1970s. And unfortunately, this is just the beginning of this crisis. Just like back then, Americans' financial pain was extended through years and years. And today, our economy's long-term outlook has never looked so despairing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to check out Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, the latest book of the economic collapse writer Michael Snyder. Please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. We look forward to reading your comments and please keep tuned for the next video.